think we're just about back on track, but just in time for the end of the offensive. Lads, today I have one last lobotomy before the end of the month. We'll be looking at the most overrated R&B musician of the 2020 so far. The song I'm going to be talking about, however, funny enough, was released almost 10 years ago. Today I'll be dissecting Pretty by the Weeknd. It's been over a month since I've last talked about an individual song, unless you want to count my list of the 10 worst songs of 2022. But even that was almost a month ago. But on this fine Thursday morning, or Wednesday, if you're a patron, join the club for early access by the way, I've got one more song to talk about before the winter storm ends. Blinding Lights was a song by The Weeknd that I covered almost a year ago that received nearly half likes and dislikes. Despite YouTube claiming that the dislike bar being invisible prevents people from participating in dislike bandwagoning, it seems that it doesn't stop people from thumbing down a video because someone dare criticize their favorite artist. Not only is their favorite artist because they have allowed the music industry to think for them, but would they come to the same defense of Pretty the same way they did with Blinding Lights? I suppose we shall see. The Weeknd already seems like such a secondary artist, like a background character in an anime, that I'm surprised this many people bother to defend him. It's like if Dragon Ball's writers made Gohan as strong as Goku and Vegeta. Hold on. They're already doing that? Well shit, you get my point. Where The Weeknd was once underrated for a top 40 artist, he now enjoys almost as much fame as Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, and anyone else with supposed international fame. And by fame, I mean sponsorship from the music industry. But you guys don't want to hear me complain about the fact that The Weeknd is famous, do you? You want me to complain about this song, and that's what I'm here to do. We can start with the fact that the music video for the song is one of many that gets by containing nudity on YouTube's watch. Another music video from a world-famous celebrity that, despite violating the community guidelines, is allowed to remain up on the site and for everyone as young as three to watch. YouTube treats music industry sponsored pornography the same way they treat Coco Melon, although Coco Melon might be more likely to be featured on YouTube Kids. Not only does the music video contain nudity, including a goddamn sex scene, but it's about the weekend's Asian ex-girlfriend fooling around with other men. One could say that this promotes racist undertones against Asian women, as some see Asian women as nymphs, whores, which one could also describe as misogynistic. But let's take a look at the lyrics and see what we find that supports these theories. Okay, let's start unpacking. The song immediately starts with The Weeknd having heard the rumors that his girl had an affair while he was gone, probably on tour, which let's be honest, I don't think I've heard of celebrity musicians being cheated on by their partners. Maybe this is true for people in pro wrestling, but it certainly never happens to musicians, at least not on the same scale. But the song continues with, cause I see the fear in your eyes. I didn't know The Weeknd was a fan of Jimmy Snuka. The Weeknd then exposes himself as a cuck because he goes back home to his girlfriend anyway, presumably to have sex with her, unless he plans on raping her to get payback. Like, okay. Hey Iwo Jima. So there's two takeaways from the end of verse 1 and the chorus. Either The Weeknd is a cuck and wants to see if he can win his girlfriend back over with his cock, or he plans on raping her for revenge, which would explain the fear in your eyes part. She's going to feel beautiful alright, she's going to see if Chris Brown will disfigure her face so she'll be less likely to get raped. I never thought I'd defend an adulterer, but sex preds earn themselves a spot so deep in Christian hell that when they think they're about to escape indentured servitude and be born again after acknowledging the great evil they committed, it turns out to be most and they have to avoid being squashed under the foot of a clueless fire giant. And if they get through that, they're killed by a Daedric Prince immediately upon entering the Plains of Oblivion. But one thing I can give The Weeknd here is that this is a song about being cheated on for once. But the way the beginning of this song is written does not give me hope that songs about being cheated on can be any better than songs about persuading a woman to cheat. I don't understand why the music industry pushes songs like this. If there's one string instrument pop musicians play, it's the heartstrings of the working people, as they torment us with songs about a woman in a relationship 
relationship, cheating on their man with a man that has more money, and pushing the notion that having more money is an alpha trait. Meanwhile, money becomes harder to come by for the working class. Last week, I celebrated my 23rd birthday and ate from the dollar menu at McDonald's and went to bed on an empty stomach. Whereas the previous year, I filled my stomach to the brim with sushi. So it's rather insulting when pop and hip-hop musicians sing about preying on the desires of middle-class women. It's not wholesome, it's not enticing, it's just insulting. Insulting that they perceive middle-class women as shallow bags of meat that want big rich men to lay pipe on them, and it only serves to make lower-class men feel threatened. Then you have someone like The Weeknd try to make a song from the perspective of the man being cheated on, only to make us look like a bunch of cucks and predators. Thanks a lot for that. The song ends with some lyrics sung in French, which, when put through Google Translate, brings us this. And now I'm starting to wonder if The Weeknd's partner that he tells of in the song was a minor. But make of that what you want, seeing as how Google Translate has never been seen as a reliable source. But I suppose with that, I'll go on ahead and sign off. If you liked this video, please be sure to click thumbs up, share the video far and wide, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and do be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and click the bell for notifications when I upload. You can also super subscribe by becoming a monthly contributor to my Patreon, a link to which will be in the description. Also, new Death Wish album is out, so be sure to catch that when it pops up on the end screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon for the next video. Bye guys.